Hey there. Welcome to the next episode of the Personal Branding for Professionals video podcast. As a part of the series, we spotlight powerful personal brands across the globe to inspire today's professionals. I am your host Ketki Vaidya and today we are going to talk about a very specific aspect of personal brand. When we begin our personal branding journey, we have to take a chance on ourselves. and uh, that is the most difficult part because we often get in the middle of our own success we want to do something new we want to take risks but then comes in an inner voice that tells you you're not worth it you would not be able to do it don't do it and uh, today's episode is going to convince you to take a chance on yourself because personal branding starts with that it will be difficult i understand but you have to push yourself a little and you have to take that risk you have to learn that new thing that you're wanting to do you have to fulfill that dream which you've kept pending for long and i promise you that the end is totally going to be worth it our guest today has witnessed this in his own life and he has transformed his life from the darkest of his times to the most successful times of his career by taking a chance on himself and this episode is dedicated to his spirit to inspire you to do the same. Joining us today is Will Slickers. With years of experience in hotel management, he is also the host of the popular hospitality podcast Slick Talk. He also co-owns a company specializing in luxury vacation rentals. He does a lot of other personal projects that we're going to talk about and I cannot wait to get this episode started. Hey Will, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so excited. This is so fun. We're all bubbly. I can feel you through the Zoom, so this is exciting. <laughs> yeah, and we have so many things in common. We love the hospitality industry and we have a podcast. So there are going to yes. be <laughs> quite a lot of things to discuss and we'll get to that. So, first of all, uh, I know that you are a hospitality expert and you have a podcast of your own, but I want to understand how did you find your calling? What was it that led to where you are today? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. Uh, it's one that I definitely don't get to talk about often, but it'll go into uh, why I believe personal branding is a, is really important. But um, long story short, uh, I was always an entrepreneur at heart, but I never knew what the word entrepreneur was. Um, I I saw my mom start her own business, and I just didn't even see it as like starting a business. I just saw it like she goes to work, like she made her own job. I didn't see it as a a thing like that people did, you know? Mm-hmm. And so for it took me a long time but then eventually when I uh moved to Spokane, Washington, I started a show for an event company. And just because I worked for Harley Davidson prior um to my move to Spokane, I was their event coordinator and marketing manager. And I just loved people. I loved events. I love having people come to like hang out and just connect and network and all the little details I went behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Um so that's why I started the company, but uh little did I know there's a thing called Uber and um <laughs> let's just say when you're a 19 year old with a couple of chauffeur vehicles compared to an instant app that almost anybody could join and and be a part of, uh I just couldn't compete. I had too much capital uh or too much overhead and not enough capital. So um I remember picking up these guests that were in a suit and tie they were slicked back hair like very clean cut looking uh businessmen and I was like damn that is what I want to do <laughs> and um I remember picking them up at the hotel that was in town it was a brand new um I think four star resort um not not in the sense of a resort but an uh, autograph collection with Marriott so mm-hmm. very unique property huge uh 700 plus rooms 60,000 square foot of event space and i just remember the ambiance the feeling of like it was very professional but fun and exciting so i just said screw it i'm going to go apply for a job and see what happens and the manager um interviewed me on the spot and hired me on the spot so oh. um i had no experience and he the one question i will always remember he said how are you with people and i said i love people i come from a big family um i'm always love you know wanting to serve or even be connected and he says great that's the one thing i can't teach you the rest i can so wow. he hired me yeah and <laughs> we uh, need more people with that kind of a mindset when they hire <laughs> exactly exactly so uh he took a shot on me and so that that boosted my confidence um and i working at that hotel showing up in a suit and tie every day taking care of guests even the ones that weren't happy um it <laughs> 
it was it was a it was a dream like it, i fell in love it was like the first time you know like when you see that that your significant other across the room and you just fall head over heels you know <laughs> and so that's what it was like for me and and i've never looked back since all right and th- then what motivated you to uh, start on your podcast how did that happen yeah so i worked at that hotel for a little while and worked my way up i got to know a little bit di- uh, a little bit of different departments like valet uh, room service, uh, housekeeping even, and just was really trying to figure out the ins and outs, but I was hungry for more. Uh, mm-hmm. My managers and directors were pretty busy all the time. So getting mentorship um, to learn about what ADR was and RevPAR and all these other things, um, I didn't know, but I had a passion to learn. So uh, I, I gave them my notice and said, hey, I'm going to move to the the ocean. I want to go to work on the boutique side of things. I want to lo- you know learn what it's like to be with a non-branded hotel. And so I moved to the Oregon coast all by myself. And uh, I think it was 22 at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, I had that entrepreneur itch still. I was there with no friends, no family, just work. So I came home, I was trying to figure out what to do. Obviously I was exploring and, and figuring out you know, the area a little bit, but at the end of the day, I, I needed to find something to create. And uh, I was watching a Gary V and Tony Robbins little <laughs> video on YouTube. And they're like, hey, idiot, get a $20 mic and uh, go to anchor.fm and create a podcast. And so I was like, all right, I'm doing it. <laughs> and that was the uh, creation of Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast. And then as I was managing properties, um, I was just doing that on the side, learning and having fun with it. Didn't think I would do anything with it other than you know, like just say I have a podcast and then um, little did I know one listener, two listeners, five listeners, 20 listeners. And now we're at a couple thousand listeners per episode. It's so it's, it's definitely grown and, and uh, gave me the opportunity to venture off and decide if I wanted to be in a hotel full time or if I wanted to pursue the podcasting career. That's really interesting. And now the podcast is what top 5% in the world's hospitality podcast, right? Which is a yeah, top 5% thing. of podcasts at all. So <laughs> did you imagine like, this when you started? <laughs> no, not at all. Like I, I, I didn't know like, you know, things like SEO and like how to you know yeah. brand and market it. Like I just knew I need a good intro song and theme and like a good outro one. Right. And <laughs> the rest would hopefully, you know, come, uh, come into flourish in itself. But, um, and the, the podcast is called Slick Talk. And I was originally just going to keep it Slick Talk, but there's like five other Slick Talk podcasts out there. So oh. I was like, well, I, I want to make sure people know it's hospitality. So I right. put the hospitality podcast. And now um, when you search hospitality, that's one of the first ones that comes up. And so it's like, okay, that really helped in my favor to to get the brand more uh, more aware and more more downloads. And of course, um, the message and the mission of the of the show out there more. So it's just been an interesting learning experience the whole time. Absolutely. And when you start to think about personal brand in general, there are so many complications along the way, but you don't have to have all of it figured out when you start, right? You just have to yeah. start with one step without procrastinating. You just get started and then things yeah. fall into place because you one thing leads to the other. You get feedback from people. You have the support of the listeners or the people who support you right from the beginning and they see you grow and all of that it is a, it is an emotional journey. And I mm-hmm. think that uh, witnessing that entire journey, you must have had so many people to thank uh, for all this, all oh, of yeah. that, right? Oh, yeah. I have tons of people to thank. I, I, the list is probably too long to say out loud. But um, long story short, I just, I I knew I wasn't going to be perfect. I knew the show wasn't going to have um, all the fine tunings, like all these professionally uh, put together podcasts and other things like that. But uh, one of my things that a listener who I've never met until like pretty recently um, put a review and just said, I love that we feel like we're learning with you. And I was like, oh, interesting, because I'm not an expert in all fields. I don't know a lot about the tech side of stuff. I'm not a, a AI or a developer or <laughs> anything like that. But at the end of the day, I know people, I know hospitality, and that's what I, I want to learn. And so that was a cool thing to, to see that the audience picks up on things that you don't even pick up on. Um, I didn't know I was learning with them. I just was like, I think this conversation is cool. I hope other people think it's cool too. And um, so it just kind of flourished into that. And it's been a beautiful journey. And, and people talk about authenticity and all of this, right? But if you, I don't want to get into what that term means, or I don't want to, again, rename and define that term here. But 
just being yourself and uh, just yeah. getting all the people to ride on with you that is mm-hmm. that in itself is very beautiful it and pe- those are the people who really support you and they value you for the work that you do so all yeah. you have to do is just take a chance on yourself first and yes. then everything else falls into place Well, I was going to say that too, because like I've had um, other podcasters in the space. I'm pretty sure, you know, um, Fuel Hotel Marketing Podcast. Yeah. If you've ever listened to them, they're great. They've been on my show and I've been on theirs. And wow. the the host um, at the end of our episode together, he's like, well, you know, when I really started tuning into your, your show more was when I heard you really geek out about the guest experience. Like you showed your true self versus right. you sounded like a lot. You're trying to sound like all these other podcasters. Uh, whether they're from different industries or or in hospitality itself because in the beginning you're still trying to find your voice and so the moment he said that that's when it changed all my perspective it was like why yeah why was i doing that like it makes me question you know like why was i trying to mimic other people when myself is is good enough like i'm i'm good enough to to be the just be authentic like you said and so that that was a big game changer for me for sure absolutely and we talk about people who start their personal branding journey and there are so many strategies there are so many articles on the internet that these are the do's and these are the don'ts and share your story in this way and have all the branding figured out but what according to you is the most important step when someone begins their personal branding journey uh the most important step i think it's really just like you said earlier it's getting just getting started just figuring yeah. out um what like my biggest thing that i've been like working through throughout the years is just what kind of sound do i like what kind of min- music like what kind of tone do i want to set when somebody puts their headphones in to to go work in their garden or to plug in their their phone when they're driving to work when they're going to listen what sound and tone do i want to set for myself and of course mm-hmm. for the listeners and i think that's the the key part so what kind of background music what kind of like uh inflexation inflexation in your voice do you want do you want to be excited do you want to kind of set a serious tone like figuring that out and then the rest of your stuff will come through um that and i i'm a very visual person so even though podcasting is very audio is all like you pretty much just see a cover and a title you don't see my face you don't see my hand movements you don't see um, me moving around and getting all like you know excited um uh, so setting a tone and of course I've, i'm a visual person so creating a, a, a good logo that you find attractive and you think is uh, kind of stands out and is different yeah. from all the rest um that's definitely like i'm a visual aspect so a good website whether it's clean simple um right. just something that people can start to put the face to the name or put a face to the voice that's really uh the next step after after you figure out the tone that you want to set absolutely and and when it comes to personal branding now there are thousands of channels that you can choose you can you can have a video podcast you can have a podcast you can not have anything and just uh, have content where you are posting something on the social media platforms every day so how does one choose the platform that they are comfortable with and do they need to be on all the platforms do you think or can they just choose the ones that that, that they are okay with Yeah, I definitely think that's a really good question actually, but the the thing that I realized in the beginning was that I was getting the traction. I was putting all my time into audio. I was learning like I told all my guests in the beginning before I even got any editing software was like, "Hey, if we mess up, we mess up and we're rolling." Like there there's no editing this. I I have no idea how to edit and I'm not paying an editor. So, um there was that I was just putting a ton of time in the audio content but then as the show grows mm-hmm. and 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 it did grow to the point where I left my day job as a manager so finding that point where okay like you start you have to start incorporating um some other things it doesn't have to be full time like I don't do a youtube every week um mm-hmm. but if I do have a good episode and the the person is excited and they're enthusiastic and they're making it you know obviously with everyone uh if i was able to do in person episodes yes then um i would probably be doing a lot more video but we're all doing zoom so long story short um i would just focus on that one brand and that was the audio i want my audio content to be consistent flawless great mm-hmm. content well branded um and then of course promote it from there on all the other channels like linkedin twitter facebook mm-hmm. instagram um but the great thing is is that you don't have to post uh, a full video every time i can take an audio clip from the recording pro- use it as the promotion you know on social media and websites and other things like trailers and all that other stuff so you can take all the content and play with it and just have fun 
exactly you can have it. yeah different clips from it the interesting snippets of that conversation and just get yeah. people to watch your episode or listen to your episode but would you think that it's a good strategy to first focus on one platform and then yeah. once you get start getting traction then then expand to the other channels like having tributaries of your <laughs> river that you start yeah. with right so would you think For that's sure. a good idea Yeah, for sure. And you and I have talked about this even before exactly. our recording was that was, you know, you're like, oh, I'm doing YouTube. And it's like, okay, great. But you should eventually go into audio, like get yourself on a podcast or do yeah. other things like that, because it grows your brand. It grows like if you think about this is what I find really, really fascinating. Um, as I've been doing this for uh, yeah, almost yeah, a little over three years now. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that so YouTube video content requires somebody to either pay a little bit more attention because they're having to hold their phone or their laptop. Yeah. Um, um, you know, Facebook, all the other stuff that requires physical engagement from a, from an audience or from yeah. a listener or viewer podcasting gives you the ability to be hands-free and not have your phone in your hands all the time and to be completely focused on that. I could be literally like, I've had people reach out and say, I listened to your podcast when I was swimming in my pool with my waterproof headphones, or I was listening to your podcast, like while gardening or, uh, you know, obviously driving to work or these, all these little things, right. Mm -hmm. That it gives you that engagement. So on, on an iPhone or an Android phone, it shows you your usage per app, right? So it tells you like Facebook, Instagram, what ones are being used the most. If you think about it, podcasts can be consistent without even having the phone on. That is still engagement. That is higher engagement, in my opinion, because it doesn't require attention from anything else. It doesn't require a screen. It doesn't require me to tap on buttons to do other things. It literally just requires headphones and ears. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that and you can that multitask at the same time. So, yeah, it, it, it drills down to the preferences that people have, and you have to. Ha make it available you have to make your content available to people no matter what their preferences so eventually exactly. we want to get there but i think in the initial stages people often do this mistake of getting themselves overwhelmed with all the platforms so they try to be everywhere but they don't focus on their content so i think yeah. that is the most important part that you first find your niche and get better at that no matter yeah. the equipment or nothing else is required but just get better at doing what you are doing and establish your credibility and once you once people know you as an expert in that field then you start telling them that now we are available on this and now we also have a podcast and we have this and that right that's a good start yes <laughs> exactly that's the per you, you took the words right out of my mouth that's exactly it gets overwhelming like you get to the point where you wake Absolutely. up and there's hundreds of notifications on your phone you have emails up the yin yang like there's so many things that go into it so it's just focusing on your one and then growing into the rest because it it will take a lot of time Absolutely. And one more aspect that I think uh, which people underestimate when they try to be on a lot of platforms is the fact that they cannot engage with their audience on all the platforms, right? And initially, mm -hmm. it's really, really important that if people are reaching out to you with their feedback, or if they are liking their episode, or even if they give you some negative feedback, then you have to be there to respond to them and help them whenever they need so that they know that this is a person who is staying true to, to their word right i cannot say that i'm ready to help you but when you reach out to me i run away <laughs> because i'm not available on that platform so that, that's one thing which i have personally experienced that i cannot be on so many platforms at once and then engage everywhere because i have other things to do as well and th that's why i've just chosen one or two platforms to start with and let's say that we uh, uh, get a better at this and more and more listeners and more and more subscribers then i have plans to expand it and that's worked for, for sure. me but i think i just want to understand from you if that's if that's a good strategy in general for anyone to follow who's getting started oh of course this. of course yeah i definitely recommend just find find what you like doing if you like doing the video editing if you like you know the visual aspect of it then have fun go crazy you know like <laughs> make that make that your thing um like I'll just use an example, like on, on one of my Instagram accounts, um, I, I'm Mr. Hospitality. Like I just made that my thing. Like, wow. but I just want people to know, like, that's what I love. That's what I do. Um, mm -hmm. So like, just be, be the expert in your field. 
Um, I tell that to clients. I tell that to people that are like wanting to get started in the industry as like, find what you love and be the go-to person for that. Like whenever I think exactly. of valet or cars, like I want to call Tim because Tim knows everything about valet or, <laughs> you know, uh, my friend, Sean in Canada, like he is the wine spirit liqueur guy. So <laughs> guess what? Anytime I have questions, I'm calling him, like make it that your thing and people will remember. Right. So you get people to associate a field with you, an emotion with you through all of this. And they get to know a part of you because of the content that you create and because of your brand. So it's about sharing your story at the end of the day. And no matter what you choose and how you tell your story, it's important that you tell your story. And that is, that is one aspect that makes it more human, that makes it Mm -hmm. more emotional for people to connect with you. And I think that that's the best part of a personal branding journey, even though it entails a lot of efforts and a lot of hard work on your part, a lot of lows and highs. But at the end of the day, it's a very beautiful feeling, a sense of contentment that you otherwise don't get just from your professional journey. Right. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, (laughs) you said it perfectly. And I want to understand one thing from you that throughout this this journey, and this is a common thing that happens in anyone's personal branding journey, that they uh, face a lot of discouragement, especially in, in at the initial stages of their journey, right? So I'll give yeah. you an example. A few days ago, I was reaching out to a person for a coffee chat, and uh, I had established uh, a good rapport with that person over a month or two, engaging with their content and everything. And I thought it would be a good time to reach out to them for a coffee chat. And the exact reply that I'm quoting that I got from this person was, I don't do stupid things like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> which was um, I had to read it twice to really take it in and I didn't let it uh, affect me because I've reached that stage of emotional maturity where I won't invest my energy in such people I did not reply mm-hmm. after that I, I didn't want to waste my time but I'm just uh, giving this as an example this is a common instance that people face when they are trying to do something of their own or when they're trying to figure themselves out a lot of people try to pull you down Right. So how do you face uh, such people and how do you still keep going? How do how do you not let that deter your journey? Yeah, uh, you said quite a few really good points in there. Um, (laughs) The biggest thing. So you said, tell your story. And I want to highlight that because um, you're when you're doing that. So you understand in the hotel world, there's branded and non-branded properties. There's and you know big name brands and independent boutiques so what do boutique hotels have to do more of in order to compete against the big guys they have to tell their story why am i not being a marriott why am i not a hilton why am i not uh, ihg property right they have to tell their story into a bigger extensive uh way than than the other brands do because they have that credibility they have that recognition Mm. um so i believe the same thing with us like personal Mm. brand telling a story Um, And it involves a little bit of vulnerability, involves um, a little bit of uh, patience, and of course, well, uh, communication, good communication. Um, And communication takes a lot of forms, written, audio, um, visual, everything. So uh, definitely understand that storytelling is is a key part to what we're doing and to how you build Mm. that connection, that relationship. Um, But... I can tell you, I've never had anybody say, I don't do stupid things like that (laughs) or or in written, but I can tell you it gets discouraging in the beginning for sure. Because when, when you're very passionate about something and this is a key thing, you have to learn how to disconnect emotionally on some of it and not take it personally and be like, okay, the reason why this episode didn't get lessons wasn't because of me. It might just be you know, people aren't listening to podcasts as much right now. They're going to probably listen to it later. Like that's the thing about content like this is that just because you put publish right then and there doesn't mean everyone's going to listen right then and there. Like Absolutely. people have lives and they, and they do all that. So it's understanding that there's a reason behind everything um, and not having to be super emotional about it. So like, that's my mm-hmm. one thing in the beginning, I got very discouraged. Like why was one episode getting a hundred and then all of a sudden the next episode got 20? Like oh, it made no sense. Yeah. So, that's the same dilemma that I have to the episode that I think would do the best does not perform that well. And the episode that I personally don't like a lot <laughs> does well. <laughs> exactly. Right. And so you're, you're, so it's really understanding the audience and the, not even the audience, but there's a lot of data to be honest behind yeah. what we're doing. There's a lot of numbers and there's mm. a lot of graphs and, 
you know, cer- certain statistics on what platforms people are listening to for how long do they listen to an episode, even though I got a lot of lessons in the beginning, mm-hmm. did they listen through the whole way through? Like there's so much stuff. Um, so it's really just not getting frustrated. Like at the end of the day, um, I just got off a panel this morning mm-hmm. and we're talking about mentorship. And I think mentorship is really key because you can have that person you can go celebrate the victories with, because right. when you have a good episode or let's say um, you publish over a hundred episodes and you have over a million downloads and like these are all very successful things you can put out to your audience but your whole audience isn't gonna be like hey great job (laughs) like they don't care they don't care they're they're one of your listeners they don't care about your statistics but a mentor or a close friend you know those are people you can privately Mm -hmm. celebrate wins and Mm -hmm. then also go to for for losses like when you're just frustrated or trying to figure out the next step yeah there's always these barriers like in the beginning when I was a hotel manager and I was still doing this there was times where I took breaks. I didn't work. I didn't publish an episode for a month because I was so busy, but then the demand was still there. When you see certain things, like how do I keep up with the demand of people wanting to be on the show or whatever? Um, you just, you start to see that Mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, what's the next step? Well, I got to publish more episodes, get more consistent. Um, you know, have maybe themes or do little series and start figuring out these things. And then, Mm -hmm. okay. I'm getting sponsors now. What what do I do? This is X amount of income versus my day job mm. income. Okay, when I get this much saved up, I'm gonna quit. Or when I do like there's these barriers, but it's still hard. You have a lot to figure out along the way. So Absolutely. to answer your question, I know I went long winded on that one. Um, is to really just don't get frustrated. Understand that there, there are gonna be lows. I still have lows. I still have days where I'm like like in November, right around uh, Thanksgiving time. My mm-hmm. listenership sucked. I was like, what the heck? I was having thousands of downloads an episode to now it was down to like almost not nothing, but like maybe a couple hundred. And I was like, why, why is nobody listening? And I was frustrated. And I was like, no, I, I don't even, it's family season. It's COVID-19. Uh, yeah. People can't travel. People are probably tired of audio and, and <laughs> webinars and other things. So it, at the end of the day, it just kept pushing forward and being consistent, putting out content. Mm-hmm. And then guess what? Two weeks later, everything's back to normal. So it's just not being frustrated and, and understanding that there's a lot of stuff outside of your control. So just keep going, be consistent, keep believing in yourself, have confidence. Yeah. And I think the other challenge that um, is common when you start your journey is projecting your accomplishments, right? As hard yeah. as it is to handle discouragement, is e- it's equally difficult to talk about yourself and talk about your achievements and share it with people. And you have to do that initially a lot because you're just uh, showing people that you are an expert in this field or that you are the go-to person for this, as you said. And to establish that, uh, you have to do a lot of um, broadcasting of your own accomplishments and sharing this and sharing that and not everyone. Which is hard. Which is really hard. And you have to also figure out at the same time whether it would come across as boasting or whether it would come across as condescending or are you being too shy about it? So how did you find the right balance and how would you suggest that someone who wants to talk about their accomplishments openly can do it in a subtle way? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. Really good point. And I'm glad you brought that up. Um, Because I had a, I had a friend who's also in the podcast world in hospitality. Um, He and I were talking, he saw some really successful growth in his show, like backed by a really big sponsor doing really big things, big people on the show. I was like, dang, how'd you, how'd you do it? And we were talking about details and he goes, well, what I like about your show is that you're always promoting your guests. You're never promoting you, what your accomplishments are, what you're doing. You're always putting other people first. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I created an, I created an award um, in June of, of 2020 to help, yeah. you know, show recognition towards the property managers and the hoteliers around the world that were just grinding and working through this whole craziness that we're in. Yeah. Um, and as long as you're doing it out of the right thing, like I share my accomplishments now with my, my audience, my following. So that way they can get excited too. I want them to get pumped. Um, but at the end of the day, it's always about everybody else. It's always about the guests. It's always about your owners. It's always about whatever um, part that we're talking about um, mm-hmm. in hospitality. Um, so that's why I focus on it. It's just finding the balance is really I think if the more you give, the more you focus on everybody else, at the end of the day, you will start to have that crazy influx of people wanting you to be on their shows and to speak at engagements and to promote this and to do that because they are liking what you are doing. They know that you are going to care about what, you know, happens on your podcast or with your network or with your, your brand. So uh, just giving back 
focusing on everybody else first and everything will follow. It's, it's at the end of the day, people will see what you're doing and, and the growth and it won't, it'll be so, it'll be so impactful that they, they can't, they can't deny it, you know? So at the end of the day, that's, my, that's kind of my two cents. Yeah. And I think they should think of it in a way that it is going to inspire someone to not give up. Your story deserves to be shared. It can have an impact, even if it has an impact on one person, let's say when they begin, yeah. that also means the world because it will motivate that person to not give up and keep going and it will show them that it's possible. Right. So if you view your 100%. accomplishments that way, it makes you more comfortable with sharing that because first you have to be comfortable with it. But that, yeah, hundred percent. And the fact that you impact one person, Think about that. If you didn't do what you were doing, you would have impacted zero people. So (laughs) at the end of the day, one person is more than enough. And that's what I think a lot of people like you see all these big YouTubers that have millions, if not, you know, hundreds of millions of subscribers. And they interview all these crazy, like famous people and just like all this stuff. Right. And you're like, dang, like they're, they're doing such a great job. And I only have like, let's say I'll just do, do an example. Cause I remember when I only had 25 listeners. Mm-hmm. So uh, like my, I only have 25 listeners. That's 25 people that are choosing to listen to your voice. That's 25 people that are choosing to listen to your content. Yeah. Be excited because that that's an impact. And so, yeah, don't, don't underestimate the little numbers. For Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, it, it is important. And uh, there, there are a lot of lows along the way as well. And I want to understand from you, how is it that you find something to stick on to and not give up because uh, some days it really feels as if it's all static and there is no progress and that everything that you're doing has no impact at all. There are days like that. And how do you overcome those days and still navigate through your journey and keep going? Yes, yeah, a really good question. And, and you make me think uh, pretty, yeah, it, it's a hard one because it's something I don't think about. Like when I have my bad days, I don't not work. You know, like I, I, I don't know what it is. It, at the end of the day, I think there's a, there's a good point where you, the term sink or swim, right? People say you're going to jump in the water and you're either going to sink or you're going to swim. Um, and I think it really comes to, to that. Like I quit my day job, a comfortable salary, benefits, security and I jumped and it was like I have to make this work I have to you can't you can't let it stop and so when you have those bad days um, I think it also comes down to remembering your why like why am I doing this who am I doing this for am I doing it for myself am I doing it to please somebody else Um, and to be honest like if you're doing it for somebody else probably not a good why like you shouldn't like in my opinion you shouldn't have to go please other people and do something that makes other people happy it's your life So go ahead and do what makes you happy and don't live off other people's expectations. So I think it really comes to knowing yourself. Like you really have to be comfortable with the fact that like my parents, like granted, they love me and they support me, but they have no idea what the heck I'm doing. No (laughs) idea. Like they don't understand that I go to work by recording episodes, editing, talking with people, doing meetings, all this other stuff. They don't understand that. Um, So understanding that like, I'm okay with that though. I know what I'm doing. I know that I have a reason like, um, and just remembering your why. So my why for me, like is, is my brother. And it's for, for also, um, I remember when I was 19, lost my show for a company was in a lot of financial like hurt. And then also was hungry to learn more about something I just fell in love with after this like incredibly painful moment in my life. So I fell in love with hotels and I wanted to learn more. Well, that's why my podcast is still here because I want to learn. I want to grow. But I also want people, maybe some other 19 year old guy or girl in the, in, in the world that's in hospitality to, to be inspired and to know that there's more than just front desk or there's more than just housekeeping. There's more than just, um, you know, serving at a restaurant. There's so much to do in this industry that we love. And so that's, that's my why. That's why I keep going. And when that why is strong enough inside you like you yeah. truly do love it you during the bad days you you'll still go through the motions you'll still get up even though you don't feel like it you'll still edit that episode even though you hate it and you're just upset or you're just not energized you're just tired uh you will do it your why will drive you absolutely and you make a great point there that when when your why is bigger than yourself Mm -hmm. then you always figure out a way to handle the discouragement and overcome all the barriers that come your way, handle all the lows and you still keep going because the fire that is inside you will 
will always keep you going it will never let you stop no matter how bad it gets right and then exactly. then you have to cross that threshold to see the results but till you get to that threshold you have to be consistent right even after that you have to be consistent but uh, yeah. initially it's really really important that you are consistent and no matter what happens no matter what results you get you still keep going you uh, put yourself out there every day and you let people see a side of you let people get to know you and along the way you're also figuring yourself out right so it takes a lot of 100%. trial and errors to get where you want to be yeah and i was going to say don't be afraid to pat yourself on the back every now and then like the, the the statistics that are against you the odds that you're even a human like at all like it just there's so many statistics that are against you like that they say that you know most podcasts are like 80% podcasts don't even make it past 10 episodes. So the fact that you make it past 10 episodes, that's an accomplishment. The mm-hmm. fact that there's multiple YouTube channels that get started and then they don't continue yeah. after their first year that if you make it to that year, hell yeah, you give yourself an pat, mm-hmm. applaud and a, a pat on the back, like take in those little moments and, and celebrate, like be, be honest and, and take pride in what you're doing. And if you're getting stuck on something, accept it and challenge it. Like, how can I overcome this? Like, what can I do to learn from this challenge? What is, why, you know, maybe it's graphic design and you're not very good at it. Well, okay. What tools can you go find to play with and, and look at new things, uh, editing software, like all this stuff, like just, and, and, and go for it and just use it as a challenge. Exactly. And as much as it is important to celebrate these small wins, it's equally important that you celebrate your struggles as well, because the struggles of today are not going to be the same as struggles of tomorrow, right? So you're only going to face that struggle once. So you might now be competing for 100 subscribers, let's say, but that struggle is not going to repeat itself once you cross 100. So there are things like that, which um, I've also started to value a lot. And uh, at the end of the day, it is it all drills down to believing in yourself. And you just have to Mm -hmm. do that and keep going because it's it's very easy to fall prey to these circumstances, fall prey to the external factors and then just say that this is not my cup of tea or I'm not made for this or I don't have it in me. It's very easy to get to that conclusion, right? But you still have to yeah. overcome and not let yourself get in the way of being where you want to be. So it's equally important that you do that, but it's tough as well. I do understand that. Oh, hundred percent. And <laughs> there's a lot of self-awareness with it. We've been talking mm-hmm. about the whole episode there. There's a huge amount of self-awareness and it's okay if you actually are the person who's like, actually, this is not for me. I did not love this. My why is not bigger than me right now. Like (laughs) I, this is not where I want to go. That's okay. That's totally okay. Except like be totally okay with understanding like what, what you do love and what you don't. And, and if you do love it and then you do have those days of doubt, then you'll, you'll say, okay, well, today is not my best day. But tomorrow I will start over, you know, just keep going. Don't stop. If you are self-aware of that, then I think everyone would be uh, probably a lot further than they expect. At the end of the day, you have to spend time with yourself and and really figure out what is it that uh, is your calling and what is it that you are passionate about. You have to find it yourself. No one can do that for you. And Amen. it's very easy that people can give you thousands of advices. <laughs> you and me can talk about it. But yeah, at the end of the day, they have to figure it out themselves. But even the first step to navigate to that direction and try to figure yourself out that itself requires a lot of courage. So I want more and more people to at least muster that much courage that they can take that first step for themselves. Exactly. And to be honest, what a perfect time to start. Like we're all cooped up at home. We're not (laughs) traveling. We're not going to the office. At least most people aren't. So what, and this is the time, like if you don't get, if you want to start a podcast or YouTube channel, start Mm -hmm. now because in the end of 2022, heck, there's going to be so many people that are going to be crushing it because they took this opportunity and, and you're going to be one of them. I know that for (laughs) sure. So it's like, just, just take, just take this time. Like we have so much figure it out. Like we have so much time at home that I, I would be surprised that if somebody couldn't figure out if they like blogging, if they like podcasting, if they like YouTubing, they like all three, you know, like who knows? So just take the time and there's, there's nothing saying that you can't do it now. This is the time to do it. Yeah, absolutely. This time is like a blessing in disguise and we have to take advantage sure. of it because it's it's the first time in history that we have no external plans that we can make, no trips that we can plan, no parties, yeah. no no collaborations with people, right? Even even when we used to go to office, there were so many of these external factors that going with the flow and just listening to what other people were saying. And now all of that is just cut out and it's only you and your voice, nothing else mm-hmm. and your work. 
So didn't you start? Didn't you start this during COVID? Right? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah, I exactly. got the time to figure out that this is what uh, this is one thing that I always wanted to do, and honestly, I had it in me, but I thought I would do it when I become successful and when I reach this. Mm-hmm. stage of my career and when i become a leader and this and that and then yeah. i just stopped giving excuses and i got started with it <laughs> exactly like i i question that too like uh, who what what tw- like i'm tw- i was 22 23ish when i started the podcast like what industry executive is going to want to listen to a 23 year old who's been in the industry for like 3 years none you know i i was like the, there's no way they've been in the industry for 25 years and at the end of the day one of my first guests was a person who's a 20 year veteran in the in the industry saying i love what you put out not what i expected so who says you need to be you know like you said yeah, no you need to be successful and yeah yeah exactly you're right on, right on the money i love it <laughs> yeah and and honestly even even with me when i was starting this podcast i i thought a lot about whether i want to have a audio podcast or a video podcast and i just started with youtube at that point of time because i figured out that this was the channel that i'm comfortable with but at the same time i was also reaching out to a lot of people to find speaking opportunities for myself and everyone was telling me the same thing that you're just 3 years into the industry i don't think you have a story and uh, <laughs> all of that uh, got to me and i thought that if you cannot give me an opportunity let me create one for myself and i just Amen. took the opportunity and created this where i get to speak and i get to uh, have conversations with people that that's something that i really enjoy i get to do it all time of the day whenever i want and that way now a lot of podcasts are reaching out to me that they want me as a speaker right so that's how things turn and tables turn but you so have to take the chance to me <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Like you're inspiring me. Like I'm getting amped up from all of this. Like I love that you saw that opportunity and shame on those people for saying, you know what? Yeah, I don't think you have a story. That's that's complete. Like I'm glad that you took the opposite advice because that's so wrong. That's the, the most false thing I've heard, you know, the whole year. And there's yeah. been a lot of false things this whole year. So, <laughs> it, it you know, at the end of the day, like good job. Like that if, if anybody gets anything from this episode, I want them to take that. That's the that's the point. that across the whole board exactly it's it's really difficult to take a chance on yourself but and it like requires you to even battle with your own voices because it's we we always value the negative feedback more than we value any any positive feedback that comes our way the moment someone says something that's wrong with us we believe them and the moment that someone mm-hmm. says something good we say that okay i i already know that it's it's not a big deal right so mm-hmm. that it's it's very important that we establish that balance where we can filter out all noise and find what exactly is our light and how do we spread it to the world <laughs> i love it see why do you, you don't even need guests on the show you could do your <laughs> own solo thing like seriously you're crushing it i love it this is great all right so i think that that brings me to the end of all the questions that i had for you and i think we got a lot of aspects covered and i hope that uh, our our viewers get inspired because of your story you you have given us so many such examples a lot of hospitality analogies as well which i love <laughs> <laughs> yes i would say i i hope people get value from what i had to say but at the end of the day like i'm serious if you don't get any value from what i said if you better get value from what you said because <laughs> i think like you hit the nail on the head i can feel it through the the computer screen like it's that's that's the goal right there is to, to, to totally embrace what you said and and just keep going and just don't stop like at the end of the day you you nailed it you crushed it so thank you so much for having <laughs> me on and giving me opportunity but i got more from this and uh from you <laughs> than i did from myself so thank you for that and, and thank you for taking a chance on me and saying yes to this interview i've honestly got so much of good advice from you that will keep me going and i connected with you at a point where i wanted to give up and i did not because of you so i have you to thank for that <laughs> oh you're going to make me cry on your <laughs> youtube channel don't don't make me cry uh <laughs> No, seriously, that's a super inspirational and that's the the reason why I, I yeah, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing so that way. Ah, oh, shoot. Yeah, you're going to make me tear up a little bit. Really? Yep. Yep. Yeah, no, thank you. That means that means so much. So, I can feel it through the through the computer screen. It's it's amazing. So, yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. I hope you liked today's conversation and learned something new from it. and i hope that you will take a chance on yourself after this episode i personally i'm going to start sharing more and more stories so that you can learn and grow with me if you liked today's episode please consider subscribing to my channel it will really mean a lot i'll see you next monday take care